Dear Livy, I remember when I first met you. You were eight years old. Your gorgeous green eyes, the best laugh, an amazing sense of humor, complete goofball. <laughs> and now you're 16 and breathtakingly beautiful. I mean, I look at you and I think, everyone must think you're as beautiful as I know you are. But sadly, some people don't see your beauty because they don't know your loving heart and your considerate thoughts. All they see is your skin color. It's almost unbelievable. It's 2020 and we're still fighting against racism. George Floyd was murdered. The protests began. I get it. It was the last straw, the straw that broke the camel's back. The protests exploded into riots. It was like watching the watermelon challenge, that last rubber band that wrapped around caused the watermelon to erupt, no longer able to withstand that pressure that was built up within it. Dear Livy, I remember seeing so much joy in your eyes because you had both purity and innocence. And now that you've gotten a little older and a little wiser, the loss of your innocence has put some pain in your eyes. And I just want you to know that I feel your pain and it hurts me. Dear Livy, I concede to the fact that many black people do get labeled with awful stereotypes and are judged based upon their appearance. I concede to the fact that many black people have died unnecessarily. I concede to the fact that it's not right, it's wrong. I concede to the fact that black lives matter. But dear Livy, do not allow hatred into your heart. If you allow yourself to hate others, even those who hate you, you will have become the very person you despise. Don't become the person you're protesting against, please. Dear Livy, the truth is that you are created in the image of God. Genesis 1 27. The truth is that you exist for a reason and for a specific purpose and God has a good plan for your life. The truth is that I love you and because I love you, because I love you, I want to challenge you with some difficult truths because the truth is People need you in this world. The people of this world need you. And the truth is that you can change the world. <sighs> Dear Livy, I believe that black lives matter. But do you? I know you say black lives matter, but do you truly believe it? Now hear me out on this because I love you because the truth is that the evidence does not agree with our statement that black lives matter the statistics reveal that black on black crime is outrageously high black people are hurting and killing other black people in the streets every single day. If Black Lives Matter 
why are you killing each other? The statistics reveal that the number of abortions by the black community is outrageously high. Abortion is murder. Black mothers are murdering their own babies every day. If black lives matter, how can you justify these deaths? Now, dear Livy, please understand I'm not pointing the blame on the black community. People of all color are guilty of doing the same things. And please understand that when I say all lives matter, it does not mean that black lives do not matter. I'll say it again. Black lives matter. I'm hurting with you and for you. But if we're going to acknowledge the truth of the evil being done to the black community, we must follow this to its logical conclusion and also acknowledge the fact that evidence stands in stark contrast with the claim that black lives matter because, well, blacks are killing blacks. If black lives truly matter, I need you to love the black community enough to also speak up against evil being done by your own community. And you have that privilege to be heard when I don't. And if I can be Mordecai to you, Esther, read the book of Esther, but specifically Esther 414. Dear Livy, I need you to know this. Perhaps you are in this position for such a time as this. As you'll read in the book of Esther, Esther saved her own people because she decided to take action as an extremist for love. But dear Livy, what I really need you to understand is that this is not a problem of skin, but sin. It's not a skin problem. It's a sin problem, an issue of the heart. <laughs> the reason for all evil in the world is the absence of God in our lives. The Lord is the absolute moral standard. If we actually lived according to God's will, following our Christ compass, in our hearts, being led by the Holy Spirit, then we wouldn't see this evil. If you truly want change, study the life of the late and great Martin Luther King Jr. His protests were peaceful, not violent, and his words were powerful and true. MLK once posed a powerful question to the clergyman of Alabama in his renowned letter, Letter from a Birmingham Jail. He asked, So the question is not whether we will be extremists, but what kind of extremists we will be. Will we be extremists for hate or for love? <laughs> Dear Livy, do you know why MLK was so loving because he followed our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Jesus is the only way you're going to see true change. Protests and riots have only the power to temporarily change minds, but it will not be a permanent change. Only God's word has the power to change hearts. And a changed heart will then have a transformed mind, and a transformed mind will direct the body to do righteous deeds. It is written in Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The word of God penetrates and has the capability of changing hearts. Dear Livy, your community needs you 
to be an extremist for love and to share the gospel of Christ. If you truly believe that black lives matter, well, all lives for that matter, then we need to share the love of Christ. Christ is the cure for the real disease, which is sin. Jesus is the truth, the life, the light, the only way. And once the love of Christ changes their hearts, they will change their minds and stop killing fellow brothers and sisters, stop murdering their own babies. Martin Luther King Jr. said, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Please understand this. It is written in Ephesians 6, 11 to 12. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Sin is at work. Dear Livy, while you and I both hate the evil being done to the black community, we cannot allow hate into our hearts or else we will become the very people we despise. You must also remember that people are not the enemy. People are not the enemy. Many people are held captive to the bondage of sin. But dear Livy, you being an extremist for love can set people free. If lives matter, then do the three things, the main three things that the Lord has commanded us to do. In Matthew 22, 37 to 40, it is written, and this is Jesus talking, and he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. In Matthew 28, 19 to 20, it's written, Jesus is telling all disciples, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and I am with you always, even to the end of age. Martin Luther King Jr. was right when he said that only light can cast out darkness. And it is written in Matthew 5, 14 to 16. Jesus is saying this to you. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Dear Livy, change hearts, change minds, change actions, change lives. Dear Livy, I love you. I may not see you again here on this earth, but I believe I will see you again on the new earth under the new heavens in the presence of the Lord. You and many other black people. In fact, it is written in Revelation 5, 9, 7, 9 that people from every nation and language will be there. Now, dear Livy, go, shine your light and set people free.